border tax cuts both ways. Of course, if you're a, a multinational conglomerate, let's say a GE, uh, you do business abroad, uh, you, you do very well with, in, in such an environment here. So is it a wash with stocks, uh, some that are hurt, and most to hear the, the way it's touted in the House right now, who are helped? Now, that's in the eye of the beholder, but at, at this point, it doesn't look like no matter what your opinions on this, it's going to go through to Kerry Sheffield. And we have uh, Heather Higgins joining us, Jonas Max Ferris. Jonas, my own read of this is that the votes aren't there for this. I could be wrong. But the Republicans are arguing that the one benefit this would have, besides being a huge revenue raiser, is it would pay, presumably, for these massive tax cuts. What if that's taken out of the equation? Then what do they do? Your read on that is right, or you would see retailer stocks down and Boeing stock up. Of general right, right. There's a lot of companies that would benefit. So I, I, we haven't seen this play out in the stock market, which means it's pretty unlikely to happen, which is unfortunate because although it's not perfect, you know, there, a radical hit to how corporates are, corporations are taxed globally needs work. And I want to say to counter those graphics, you would be lowering the corporate tax rate at the same time. So even the company that takes a bigger hit, like a Walmart or a Home Depot, is going to pay less tax on their profits. So there's going to be a possible equalization there that isn't going to mean it's just blatantly passed on to the consumer. That's and an again, even if it is point. passed That's on to the consumer. That's an excellent point. Yeah, I, Even I if it is passed on to the consumer, you know, there's consumers of, of airplanes, too, who then have to pass those costs on. So there's other beneficiaries. You might save money elsewhere in your budget. So it's a little simplistic to just point to the negative side of it. Who was right, speaking uh, up there? Sorry, it was Carrie. I, okay. I agree with Max because, you know, uh, the tax code is really a statement of priorities. And the, the intent with the border tax is that we prioritize domestic producers over foreign producers. That is a statement of priorities. The other statement of priority, it needs to be balanced by, as Max said, the, uh, the tax cut to the, both the individual, individual and the corporate. You can't have one without the other because then that is a statement that would actually hurt the consumer if we don't have the tandem corporate and individual tax cut because then that would offset the hurt, the hit to the consumer because they would then have the benefit of having the tax cut that would offset potentially the rise in consumer prices. And I got to tell you, as someone who grew up in a family with eight kids, my parents were on welfare at one point, we shopped a lot at Walmart. We shopped a lot at Costco. And there was a study by MIT that showed Walmart and these big box retailers, they actually benefit low income, middle income families more than rich families. So we got to make sure if we we want to protect the most vulnerable among us that we are implementing a tax code that does not hurt consumers at that level. We got to make sure that we offset that with individual tax cuts and corporate tax cuts. Well, obviously, to, to Jonas's point, and Heather, maybe you can pick up on this if you slash uh, corporate uh, tax rates, individual tax rates by some pretty big margins, as seems to be the goal of Republicans, that could go a long way to addressing those fears. But having said that, do you ever think the market has gotten ahead of itself here? I, I, I don't think it dismisses. Uh, any of this stuff, but it doesn't seem to be worried about it. Are, are you? I, I'm not. I read it the way you do. Uh, remember, Trump talked about wanting to have a tax cut. It's the House that said that they wanted it to be revenue neutral. Uh, you've got a well, lot Mitch of division. McConnell did too in the right. Senate. I mean, well, I meant GOP leadership. No, I got you. I got you. On the Hill, uh, the you have the people who have been supportive of the border adjustment tax, uh, which really is a change in how we do deductions, uh, really making an argument for territoriality and moving towards territoriality in the tax code. The people who are opposed to it are saying that it's really a, a stealth consumption tax uh, and that it's, it's going to hurt the little guy. The, the people who are in favor of the border adjustment tax will tell you, uh, in addition to having the tax cuts that you would have, that you're also going to have significant moves in the strength of the dollar. Um, to compensate. So it, it's not simplistic, but I think looking at the politics of it, the coalition, which is uh, looking out for the little guy, the retail consumer, is a lot better organized than the coalition of exporters in terms of the, the uh, effort that they've made to advance this. So it doesn't look, unless Trump and the new tax plan comes out strongly in favor of this, I don't see it going much of anywhere. Interesting. Uh, let's step back. I still think it's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know what would be the magnitude, Jonas, by which the president would like to see it happen. That is sweeping, comprehensive, uh, lower rates across the board for everybody, including corporations. But I, 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 I seem to see the markets expecting it will happen. The only question is when. Um, but if we take away this border tax, or whatever you want to call it, that isn't flying anywhere, and there's pressure on the part of, of budget-minded Republicans to pay for these things so that they don't make deficits worse, 
whatever argument you can make that tax cuts will ignite revenues down the road, in the near term they, they make them worse. Uh, how are they going to push that through? How are they going to get that through? Pass themselves. Forget about Democrats. Well, cause we just said revenue. Revenue neutral is not such a bad thing, and it's very passable as revenue neutral. And it's even a revenue neutral tax fix, which, by the way, at the corporate level might be how it's going to have to happen to get passed saves potentially tens if not hundreds of billions of dollars in tax gaming planning dodging done by corporations putting short, routing profits through countries adjusting to having tax they spend so much just complying with the current more complex tax code than, than what we're talking about a solution so that savings alone is good for stocks and companies even if the corporate tax is done revenue neutral and then the income tax doesn't have to be revenue neutral because that's passable because even democrats are going to not want to stand ahead of a necessarily a tax cut for individuals so they, they, it's possible both sides will be dealt with possibly separately and with a different goal and overall revenue goals. And one of the other things we should focus on, Carrie, as well, is the administration's insistence that the rich won't get away with tax cut murder here. Uh, whatever your views are on the subject, that uh, you have Steve Mnuchin and others who said that it will be revenue neutral for them. In other words, that it will be offset by limiting their deductions and the like so that the net tax cut for them is virtually no tax cut for them. Do you buy that? And if you do, then um, what will the fallout be from angry, you know, rich people like Jonas complaining? <laughs> well, I, I don't see them taking to the streets and, and burning things down. At least I hope we won't get to that point. But the, you don't know I, Jonas. I, oh boy, oh boy. I'm glad I'm not on set with him. I'm glad I'm remote right now. But the, no, I, I think that um, you know, the wealthy individuals pay the vast majority of taxes in this country. Actually, lower and middle income families, a lot of them pay no taxes. So when we're talking about um, revenue neutral and, and saving the taxpayers, we're actually talking about, uh, in general, saving very few taxpayers. Um, but I, I think that if we're able to, as, as I said before, make a value statement, make a priority statement through our tax code that we prioritize American homegrown businesses over foreign businesses, then uh, it, we can make it revenue neutral from the beginning. But over time, we can actually have more economic growth here domestically. No, you make you know? sense. But uh, Heather, I don't see this being revenue neutral in the beginning. I, I, am, uh, uh, I believe that, that tax cuts do create enormous revenues. You just don't see them immediately. You will. The, da the danger is that who's ever in power, Republicans or Democrats, will spend all that money and then some in worsen deficits, but it will create revenue, but it won't right away. And I'm wondering how Republicans uh, explain that. Scoring. Okay, there you go. <laughs> you just, scoring is the perpetual game, right? Whether it's dynamic or not, how many years out you're going, right. what you're counting, what you're not. You can make the numbers yes, say anything you want. Yes, you can you make want. the numbers say anything you want. Yeah. Do you know that my ratings are higher than Bill O'Reilly's? Absolutely. A, yeah, it's it's the a way weird you count measurement. Them, right? It's a very unusual measurement I use. Um, guys, thank you all very, very much.